this little glitch. So I'm in the mall. I can give you. I've got some good news coming. Because I'm in the back, I'm in the green room. I'm like, sorry, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I know you guys are bloodthirsty sometimes, but wait a minute. We've got a special guest in the audience, and I'm going to introduce you to him. This is bonus for you guys because I'm going to introduce you to the director of God Bless America, Bobcat Goldblatt! I'm Michael Moore tonight. I, uh, <laughs> ten minutes and the movie's coming. I can do ten minutes. All right. I, uh, <laughs> thank you. I, uh, I, where shall I start? You don't look the same either. I, um, uh, <laughs> some of you thought, uh, some people think like I'm dead, and other people think that I go, ah, all the time. <laughs> Which seems like it'd be funny, but sooner or later it'd be a dick in all of our asses. I, um... <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. Oh, well, no pressure. Besides this, we're recording it, so... Uh... I, uh, where shall I start? I will actually do some stand-up. Um, you know what takes me out of a fisting video is? <laughs> a Lance Armstrong Live Strong bracelet. <laughs> Trying to enjoy it. Um, haven't done stand up in a long time, but I appreciate this chance to. I do enjoy going out because there's a connection that I make with a live audience that I really don't get. Uh, I ran out of money, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I do stand up now. If you see me doing stand-up, it's part of the alimony tour. I'd much rather be making fuck-up movies. Um, I, uh, oh, so, oh, I'm gonna tell a story. This is a true story. I recently got done, I was doing stand-up, and, uh, and, uh, and this drunk young woman came up to me, and this is a true story, and she was flirting, and she's like going, if you came home with me right now, I would fuck you all night. This is a true story. Wait, I don't, like, I have low self-esteem, and I know I look like fuck pie, but this really did happen. She's like, she's flirting, like, I'll fuck you all night. I don't even think that's flirting, right? That's just a Hail Mary pass, right? But I'm too stupid. I'm like, what is she really saying? I don't know. Maybe she likes me. But she's like, I will fuck you all night. And I was supposed to get all excited and horny, but, um... I'm 49 years old. That, that, that sounded horrible to me. <laughs> I'll fuck you all night. I'm like, Ugh, you know, just, just me? Really? <laughs> she would have got a lot further if she said, if you came home with me right now, I would fuck you once and then, and then cuddle. Uh, that would have that gotten somewhere with me. Look. Don't all look at the old guy during this bit. He <laughs> actually elbowed him. Hey, remember that? Like, you already made that. Uh, or you get like, if you came home with me right now, I'd fuck you once, cuddle, and then get up and make you a low sodium breakfast. <laughs> that might actually test the bounds of my matrimony. <laughs> I, uh, well, let me talk about myself, uh, for those who aren't familiar, um, comedian, I was big in the 80s, I, um, I got arrested because I said the Tonight Show on fire, thank you, I had to go to court, this is a true story, I said the Tonight Show on fire, I had to go to court, my own attorney goes, plead not guilty, I'm like, uh, I saw the footage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's me, you know. And my uh, punishment was I had to do TV commercials, which was pretty funny. I'm like, hi, I'm Bobcat Goldblatt. If you're ever on a talk show, don't set it on fire. <laughs> Back to you, McGruff. <laughs> Here's your old friend, Kelsey Grammer, with some safe driving tips. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny, I'm like, 
You think it's weird, you're going, we just came to see a Japanese action film. I don't know how the fuck this happened. If there's gonna be anybody from Police Academy, we were hoping it'd be the black guy who makes the funny noises. <laughs> What's that? You can ask me questions, I'm, I'm in the room, it's not TV. <laughs> What's that? God bless America got a release date in the U.S. God bless America did get picked up. Woo! <laughs> uh, and uh, I would sincerely like to thank all of you folks at Midnight Madness because uh, the people who bought it were here the other night when it premiered and you were really kind and they, they saw dollar signs and uh, <laughs> unfortunately you're not the target audience for the rest of the fucking world, you know what I mean? <laughs> if we can only get the rest of you in every city to come out, uh, my movies I don't think you understand. They make hundreds of dollars. <laughs> I used to direct the Jimmy Kimmel show, and uh, Grover, oh, well, uh, when I see him, I'll say, hey, Jimmy, I mentioned your show in front of 1,100 people in five claps. <laughs> so you feel really good about that. And Grover the puppet was on, and uh, yeah, I don't want to name drop. And, uh, and this is a true story, Grover, so Grover was just laying on the floor. Like, you know, his legs were all akimbo. And I, and I said, I said to the puppeteer, I go, yo, that's fucking up my shit big time. You gotta, you gotta put that puppet on. Cause I thought he'd have his own special case, right? Wouldn't you think Grover? So, so they put Grover, the guy puts Grover on, he goes, he goes, hi, Bobcat. And I really became a kid. I was like, uh, uh, hi, Grover. <laughs> And then the other thing was, at that precise moment, I went, oh, fuck, this is clearly where I got my act. <laughs> like, clearly, as a kid, I was watching Grover going, I, li I like his style. That guy's a good actor. He's really talented. <laughs> Can you come to ten I do like Toronto. Um, you, you're, uh, thanks. I'm not sucking up. You, you, you don't realize it that you, you really are nice. Um, you're very nice. Outside of the mayor, you're really, really nice. <laughs> Is that how he got elected? You're like, oh, I'm, we're tired of everybody saying we're nice. <laughs> Look at this douchebag. We'll make him mayor. <laughs> Watch my fucking mouth. I gotta get out of the city tomorrow. <laughs> Between that and God bless America, I may be a man without a country. <laughs> um, I live in California. Where I'm glad Schwarzenegger's no longer the governor. I don't. I never really had a problem with Schwarzenegger. I don't. Well, here's my thing. I think he got elected because he molested so many women. The voters thought he was a Democrat. <laughs> Democrats in the states always have affairs. It's like an ego thing, like, it's always insecurity. They're like going, geez, I wonder if I could bang Marilyn Monroe, or oh, I wonder if I could fuck this intern, or, you know what I mean? Whenever a Republican gets involved in a scandal, it's even, it's gotta be more deviant. It's not just normal sex, it's like, it's like, I wonder if I could fuck a guy in a toilet, or, hey, I wonder if I could get my wife banged on the internet, or, it's always gotta be something like, a, just like some sort of sense of sin involved, like, oh, my sperm is Jesus' tears. The only thing that made that weirder is I did that right in your face. I really did. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Sorry, hi. What's your name? Sorry. Hi, Tracy. All right. Now, if I wasn't a comedian, this would be great. Like, if I was a singer and we were having this exchange, it would be the best fucking show you've ever went to. But because I'm a comic, this is terrifying to you right now. I'd like to dedicate my next joke. This next joke 
this next joke is about my balls. <laughs> no, really, it is. It's about my balls, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I woke up the other night, my cat, uh, Peeps LaRue, she's French-Canadian. <laughs> Peeps LaRue was, uh, you know how cats make biscuits, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, cats were like that, right? So she was doing that on my nuts, right? <laughs> but, I was having a dream that I was scratching my nuts and my balls were moving around. And I wake up and my balls are still moving. I'm like, like I'm looking at my hands. So I ripped the sheet off. Bad move, because peeps just clawed me on both sides of my ball bag. Like, and we had this weird Mexican standoff, like a Tarantino film. We're staring at each other, like, what are you gonna do now? You know, like. <laughs> it was like waking up in a Saw movie. <laughs> so I, uh, whatever, I just woke up my wife, the 09, I'm like, don't cut the blue cable. <laughs> How are we doing? Is the movie here yet? Is this part of my community service work? <laughs> Two minutes and the movie's here? All right. All right. So here we go, folks. I'm going to tell you a story now. And uh, this is like my favorite story to tell right now. And it's a true story. So uh, if you, I don't think you've ever heard it because uh, I feel bad telling the story because it's about air travel and that's really hackneyed like oh a comedian talking about air travel wow that's some untapped comedy fucking bonanza <laughs> this is a true story I was on a flight recently and the engine blew up and it was terrifying it was like like it, it was like and then the and the whole plane started vibrating that's not the noise it made by the way clearly I'm not the black guy from police academy <laughs> Because it's more like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and there was a rooster on the wing. <laughs> and a lawn sprinkler. <laughs> All right, that's as much of his act as I see. So, it's a true story. The engine blew up, and the plane started vibrating and shooting straight towards the earth. There's like, eh, right? And, uh, oh, you know what? Like, uh, I, I, we were on, we were in LA on our way to New York, and the plane's got, like vibrating, and I thought, well, before you freak out, see what the flight attendants are doing. And these two flight attendants were looking out the window, they turned around, and they were crying. <laughs> I pooped a little, ladies and gentlemen. I like this. <laughs> That's gonna be my catchphrase. I pooped a little. Uh, <laughs> It's gonna be my get her done, I'll be so, and I pooped a little t shirts after the show. <laughs> True story. Oh, by the way, you know the flight attendants always go, We're here for your safety first. Fuck that. These whores are checked out. They're like <laughs> squeezing each other's hands. I always thought you were professional, Karen. <laughs> so, oh, by the way, and then the pilot, I'm ramming up. So the pilot, is the movie here? Yeah, let's go, go, keep going. All right. <laughs> that means it's not here. <laughs> Stuck, stuck behind Borat. Um, so, the pilot got on and he goes, Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your pilot. There's no reason to be alarmed. That's the very reason to be alarmed, ladies and gentlemen. I'd have been less freaked out if that pilot had gotten on and went, Holy fuck! Did you guys feel that sweet shit? Fuck me! Oh! Do not look out at the right side of the plane. <laughs> Fuck. All right. That would have been more relaxing if the pilot was, Fuck! Shit! Ah! Oh. Keep your trays where they are. It really doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and smoke. Uh, kiss a stranger. Rub one out in your seat, because, uh... I'm gonna try some shit I learned in pilot school. That would have been more relaxing. By the way, that's the voice of death. If anyone ever comes up to you and it's all calm, you know what I mean? Like if you walk out here tonight and someone goes, I'm gonna kill you. That guy's gonna kill you. Someone jumps out and goes, I'm gonna kill you. That's not, that's just some drunk pussy jock that wants his friends to pull him off of you so he doesn't really have to get in a fight. I'm gonna kill you. 
Calm down, Todd. He's not worth it. <laughs> you can get out of here. Todd's had a lot of vodka Red Bulls. He's gonna fucking snap. <laughs> like Jeffrey Dahmer didn't go, I'm gonna fucking chop your head off and make a soup bowl out of it. Ah! He was like, uh, can uh, I get you another drink? <laughs> Does this rag smell funny to you? <laughs> Thanks for bringing him back, officer. We're just having a lot of noise. Who said comedy was threes? <laughs> so, oh, here's the point of the story. I'm gonna build you a peak now. Now, I'm gonna lose some of you in this portion of the story, but stick with me, okay? I'm not making this up. The other people on the flight was the United States Special Olympics team. Now, just go with it. Just fucking relax. I can't change the story so you're more comfortable. It wasn't me and the cast of Lost. It was the Special Olympics team. It was 35 men and women in red, white, and blue running suits with medals. So if it wasn't the Special Olympics team, it was a really, really big group with Down Syndrome. <laughs> so, as the plane's creaming towards the earth, the pilot got on one more time and goes, Hello, oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot. There's no reason to be alarmed. We're gonna land in Cleveland in two minutes. <laughs> Swear to God, it's a true story. And the runway will be covered entirely in foam. <laughs> and at the very end of the runway will be a fire truck. And I sat there, and I thought, I'm dying. <laughs> and then a guy in the back of the plane clears a bell and went, Fire truck! <laughs> Story. He's excited. He's gonna see a fire truck. Fire truck? I'm like, if we live, you'll see a fire truck. That's right. Now, I know some of you work with mentally challenged people, and I know some of you have mentally challenged people in your family, but if you don't think they say or do anything funny, you're denying that they're human beings, because that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard another human being say. Thanks. I think the movie's here.